Sure, we've all got LED strips, but do your LED strips do this? These effects are created using individually addressable LED strips and some open source software called WLED. An individually addressable LED strip is just like a regular LED strip, but each of these LEDs can be controlled independently. They can be switched on and off separately or set to a unique color. In this video, I'm going to show you the easiest way to get started with individually addressable LED strips and WLED. No soldering required. We'll start with some basics first. These LED strips are digitally controlled and they are controlled using three wires. The first one is the five volt power supply on the bottom of the strip here, which powers the LEDs. Then you have the data line in the middle, which sends the controlling signals to each of the LEDs, and then the ground wire or the negative wire. Controlling these strips is pretty darn complicated, but the WLED software takes care of all of that for you and gives you a web-based user interface that you can use on your phone or your computer to control the lights. It also integrates really nicely with Home Assistant or MQTT. The WLED software is installed onto an ESP device, which the LEDs are then wired onto to make the whole thing work. It's really complicated, and thankfully, there's a really smart guy called Andres, or Quindor as he's also known, who has created these pre-assembled and pre-built WLED controller devices, and he's done all of the hard work for us. I'm using a Quinled Dig Uno controller, which I bought from his website. It actually has two channels available on it, so you can theoretically control two separate LED strips. These boards have a ton of features on them, which make them really easy to use and really powerful, as well as a bunch of safety features like fuses so you don't burn your house down. It comes pre-installed with the WLED software, so you can take it out of the box and get started straight away. In addition to the controller, you're going to need a few other bits of hardware as well to get started and I'll link to it all in the description below. You'll need a 5 volt power supply and a barrel jack adapter that fits onto the plug end. I recommend a 2 amp power supply because these LEDs can use quite a bit of power, especially when you want to increase the brightness to full. You'll need your controller, and I suggest carefully removing the ESP device from the top of it and keeping it separate for now. You're going to need some wire, nothing too fancy, and you'll obviously need your LED strip. The one I'm using is a BTF Lighting SK6812 RGBW strip, which has both colour and white LEDs on it, so you get a really nice looking white light, as well as colours. But WLED supports many different kinds of strip, and you can find the list of the ones that are compatible on the WLED website. Once you've got all these bits, you can cut a couple of pieces of wire to power the controller and the LEDs. I'm using red and black wires for the positive and the ground 5 volt power, and I'm simply stripping them back a bit at the ends with my snips. I then connect the red one to the positive terminal of the barrel jack with a small screwdriver, and the black one to the negative terminal. The Quinled controller has similar screw terminals built onto it. At one end you have these two terminals, these are the inputs for the 5 volt positive and one for the negative wire, which comes from the power supply of the barrel jack. At the other end, you have four terminals, which are the 5 volt outputs to power the LED strips and the two data channels. These are clearly marked on the board so you can see which one is which. I once again screw the other end of the red wire from the barrel jack into the positive terminal on the board, and then the black one to the ground or negative terminal. Your LED strip should have come with a wired connector clip like this one, with three wires coming out of it. I pull them apart slightly and strip the ends off so I can connect them to the controller. You've got the red wire for your 5 volt positive power, and a green wire for the data channel, and the white or black wire for your ground. Connect these into the other end of your Quinn LED controller with your data wire in channel 1.
When you're done, pop the ESP board back on top of this one, making sure that it's on the same way as it was when you got it. Usually that's with the USB port of the ESP device facing towards the fuse. Plug the power supply into the barrel jack and connect the LED strip to the connector. And if everything worked correctly, the first 30 LEDs or so should light up. That's the hard part done. Now comes the fun part. When WLED is first booted up, it will start broadcasting a new Wi-Fi access point called WLEDAP. Connect to this with your phone and type in the password WLED1234. Once you're connected, it should automatically take you to the WLED configuration page where you can connect it to your normal home Wi-Fi network. If you're using Home Assistant, you'll probably find that it's immediately discovered your new WLED lights. I use the Visit Device link in Home Assistant to navigate to the WLED software page, but you can just as easily open it up in a web browser and navigate to the IP address that the router has given your Quinlet ESP device. If you're using this on a PC like I am, then I recommend switching the user interface to PC mode, which just makes it easier to navigate. And then we just have one last bit of configuration to do before we're done. Click Config and then LED Preferences. Then scroll down to the first channel under Hardware Setup and set the type of LED strip that you're using. I'm using the SK6812, so I select that from the list. Then I put in the number of LEDs that are in the strip. My strip is 5 meters long and has 60 LEDs per meter, so there are 300 LEDs in total. You can now go back to the main page of WLED and start playing with your lights. There are dozens of different colors and effects available that you can play with, and all of these can also be selected in Home Assistant as well. Now you'll just need to find somewhere to put your cool new LED strip, and then we'll create some Home Assistant automations, because these aren't just fun, they can also be really useful. I decided to mount this particular strip to the back of my computer monitors. Time to cue the build montage. When it comes to going around a corner, I learned this little twist and fold trick from old mate Lewis at the Everything Smart Home YouTube channel, and it really does the trick. I had a little bit of LED strip left over, so I did the other monitor as well for good measure. You can join multiple LED strips together using these handy joiners that I found on Amazon, or you can also solder the wires between them if you're feeling adventurous. Then just plug it all back in and hope for the best. actually turned out pretty good in the end. It's proper jazzy. But apart from being jazzy, I also use them for notifications. For example, here's an automation I created in Home Assistant that is triggered when the front doorbell detects a person. It has a condition to check the WLED strip is actually on, because I don't want the lights to be flashing my office if there's no one in there. And then it takes a snapshot of the current WLED settings using the Scene Create service. This records all of the brightness levels, colors, and all of the other settings for that light and saves it. I then use the Light Turn On service to set the light to 75% brightness and activate the police effect. The automation then pauses for five seconds, leaving the effect running, and then reapplies the scene that we created before so that the lights go back to what they were set to before the effect. 
If someone walks up to my door whilst I'm sitting at my computer, my monitor lights flash red and blue to silently alert me. I can then mute myself if I'm on a video call because the doorbell is probably about to ring. I have similar automations that make my lights twinkle blue when my weather station detects that it's raining, or go green when the washing machine and dryer are finished and unemptied. You could just as easily use any smart light or LED strip to do this, you don't need to use WLED. I just happen to like the colours and the patterns and I think they're pretty fun. This is the easiest way that I've found to set up WLED for a project like this. I actually use these LED strips in lots of places around my house, including its under cabinet lighting in my kitchen. But this is a much longer run of LEDs and I use a lot more of the advanced features of WLED for these. And I even had to use a much bigger power supply and do some power injection to prevent the lights getting dimmer and discoloured as the strip gets longer. Is that something you'd like to know more about? Let me know in the comments below and I'll consider making an advanced WLED video all about my kitchen lights. But whilst you're down there, why not subscribe to the channel? I regularly release videos about smart home technology and home assistant. By subscribing to the channel, you'll know when I release a new video, and then together we can make your home smarter.